Let's go. What is up? What is up? What is up, YouTubers? Episode 57 tonight. We we got the homie Nick down below there from from Triple Six Surfers. How's it going, Nick? Nick. Looks like he's cracking that cold one. That's what just cracking my cold beer after work. Literally just sat down. Well, that's cool. We appreciate uh, you giving us the time. That's for sure. Yeah, I appreciate it. Oh, hold on, let me mute this a little bit. Who we got out I'm here? Wondering when he's going to have me up here. We got we got James Perry first in the chat. What's up, James? Okay. From JNS Exotics. Oh, Bill from Victory Lane. Bill. What up, Bill? And we got the dead man. Oh, Bill Zombie. What up, Vance? What up, brother? Shit. We got Brave Adventure. Good what brave. up, Brave? I try to like a, make a, a motion or something special to every, you know, single person. It gets hard. But, I mean, some people I have some things for, and other people I don't yet. But I, sooner or later, I'll get to it. What up, brother? Hey, Zeus, the Octagon God. And Jay, there's my uh, cool mofo points meter. He he's been getting beat here late. He's losing some ground. Slithered up in the house. Jay Slithers. I'm gonna go grab my lamp so y'all can actually see me while y'all are shouting out. Go ahead. Black Earth, what up? He's another one of my cool mofos. Blake is saying hi to everybody. Blah, 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 blah. Hello, everybody. We got Mr. Wood up in here. The Kurt. The Wood. What up, dude? So, yeah, uh, as he was uh, saying right Wood there, President. Go, go, go over and look for Royal Caribbean Exotics, DJ and Brandon. Um, Brandon's Peace and Pets, Royal Caribbean, the DJ. And uh, he's trying to throw a little giveaway together at 400 subs. I believe he's like 50-something subs away. But go in there, show the boy some love. Good bunch of guys over there, for sure. That's a little better. Now you can see my beautiful mug. Uh, yeah, we love your beautiful mug. What up, Rob? Oh, lucky Rob. Rob, Rob. What's good? Another PA guy. Who else? What's going on? We we got both Kurtwoods up in here. But we appreciate that. Heck yeah. <clears throat> Justin from My Animal House. He's on before me. So if you don't know about Justin from My Animal House, log on about 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and look for My Animal House and go watch him. Because that dude, he, he's just a cool dude. Him and his wife, Trish, are both good people. Great people in the community. If you ain't supporting them, you're missing out. Good people. For a little sure. Monthly, a little monthly giveaway, too, if you do their hashtag now. Yeah, they do a t-shirt a month. And we got Ryan from Little Feedings. And I got to do it. We at 20, so. Thank you guys. <laughs> we Dude, I, don't know, I don't know how Benji's name popped up there. I mean, I clicked on that oh, and then what? Benji popped up. But what's up, Benji? Nikki from Irresistibles. Oh, Stan, that's you. You still got capabilities. <laughs> You're messing with me, dude. I, I, I slipped a little, but I, I caught on I to what was, was going to on there. I was see how long it was going to take you. You're like, how in the hell? I didn't punch on that. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> I was messing with you, brother. <laughs> hey, that's all good fun games, dude. All good and fun and games. Keeping you on your toes. <laughs> I, I, I didn't slip that much. and You got me little. You got me little. 
Will, what's uh, up, dude? Like, man, wait a minute. These things are changing way too quick. I, I missed Letka somewhere. I, I, I mean, everyone's saying hi to him. I didn't see his comment, but we can't. We got to go back up and find Letka. There's one of the OGs right there. I mean, what the hell am I doing? No. I don't want to hide no comments. Uh, um, I hit I hit the comments and I come on back and dang we got five dollars for Kurtwood. Got the five dollars. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Banger. I have no idea where I'm at on these chats. It just got messed up. It jumped from straight blast. We appreciate you guys over there. Tommy, right there. Tommy yeah, Tom, right well, yeah, Tommy's on his wife's Tommy? account. That's yeah. Ewok. Ewok for you other people. It's me. It's Ewok. I'm my own name. Ewok. That's exotic. Walk. The geckos for y'all. Walk. Uh, then we got more Forge. I tell you what. Like, I caught their show for the first time. It was only show two last week. And uh, shout out your show, more Forge, because you guys got a good show. I like what you've got going on over there. Uh, like, Good watch. It was a good watch. And Jamie be firing those hot seat questions at them. Yeah, you know, them hot seat. Better be on you. Better be better be on it. They got me wanting to bring back my quickies. Fox. If I missed you, you guys, I, I'm sorry. Like Fox, this, it Fox, something Fox. got messed up. Stan's messing with me. Blame it on him. I didn't, I didn't touch nothing, bro. <laughs> Whatever you're doing, I told you before. I wasn't touching anything. You're still on, Nikki. Yo, I don't even know where. I don't know what. I'm all messed up tonight. Hey, I had a rough what, week. Whatever all right. you punched on last, bro, was what you left off on. I had a rough week. I'm a little rusty at this. But yeah, so next, now... over here. Here, go ahead. You, <laughs> you yeah, ask the you take that over. You take about... it over, buddy. It's all you. You could have it. What's going on, Nick? How you doing, help buddy? You hey, man, just living every day. Living every day. Uh, how's your season going this year over there? What's up, Jamie? We're going, we're going a little slow. We're not uh we're not blowing it out. We're not trying to overcompensate for anything, so we're just taking it slow. I think I've got three snakes that I'm pairing right now. Right. right. So you kind of <clears throat> kind of backed it off a little bit this year. I know I mean, you said Go I ahead. know you said prior that you was going to stop doing the uh, just who's your daddy stuff and, mm -hmm. and try to more focus what you're doing on trying to hit certain combinations. I, I remember well, we you still, saying something like that. Yeah, we still do, a, you know, dual, triple, quad, sire clutches. Just, uh, you know, maybe two or three snakes. But right. uh, for the most part, we are trying to lock in certain genes. <clears throat> that we want to work with, such as, you know, confusion, clown, acid. Uh, oh yeah. I really like the bamboo stuff. I'll never stop loving bamboo. That's one of my favorite looking snakes. It, Cause it's, I like that. Stan. Boom. Like the camo, camo colored snake, the bamboo. So anything with bamboo in it. Static Morse just dropped the $10 banger. What? Oh. what? That's awesome. Thank you, Eddie. Hell yeah. I mean, this yeah, is the, the most I made in this show so far. Fifteen dollars. You were behind. You were behind chat. Hold on. I'm here, I'll, I'll catch up. We got fries that came in. Static morphs came in, dropping a ten dollar thing. Like heck, yeah, dude. I appreciate that. Then exotic A one pets came in. What's up, fries? What's up, fries? So, like you, you said uh, that you like the bamboo gene. Like, what is it about the bamboo gene that really just makes you want to work it? I don't know. You know, I just it. I guess I, I'm a hunter, a deer hunt, and I love yeah. like different kinds of camo. And to me, it just it. To me, the bamboo snake or the gene looks like you would picture a snake to look like. You know, I don't know if that makes sense, but like the colors and the pattern and. Everything like More that. Forge. Another seems ten dollar like banger. Be. You guys are making me I, rich tonight. Sorry. Ever yeah. since I got that damn uh pat, super pastel bamboo with the yellow, like bright yellow head. Yeah. 
Ever since I got that snake, I've been in love with bamboo. So, well, you could show that thing again if you want, because we we can't see that thing enough. I would take her out. Last time I took her out, she had a bunch of eggs in her, and that was a while. Oh, ago. I noticed. We ain't yeah, messing with her then. I'm hoping that her, then. I'm I'm actually like hoping hoping that she, it all works out because she's been paired to a bamboo inchy. So I'm trying to you know obviously to get white snake. But I want to try to see what um, you know I can do with that pastel, that super pastel bamboo with that bamboo inchy, just to see what happens. And um, you know I've been pairing our pastave fire with a um, pastel lesser ghi hat albino male, just to see what I can get out of that because they look pretty close, you know, like they the visual, the the pattern and the coloring. I mean, it looks pretty much the same. But it's got, right. you know, I'm trying to get that GHI. You know, I love GHI. So I'm trying to put the GHI in you guys hear me now? Better? the Pastave. Let's see what happens. You're a little low, Stan. I mean, it's not like we can't hear you, but you're well, like while we're talking, up. you're a little low. Yeah, I turned my mic up some. I didn't want to go too crazy. I'll turn it up more if I have to. Yeah, turn it up a little more, just a tad. And I'm really, I'm really looking forward to breeding this cinnamon. Pass the other belly at a uh, clown that I got from F and A yeah. Ball. From Thank F &A you, Ken. Yeah. <laughs> so, so I mean, I, I got it off an auction, and I didn't pay much for it. And you know, with the hatchings and stuff going on that I have here, I was like, you know, I could, I could get her in. But then, you know, me and Nick was talking, like, you know, when we first started doing this RWO, because if you all remember, like, the RWO, the original three was me, Nick, and, uh, and, uh, uh, what's Drago's? Drago's, mm -hmm. like, disappeared on us. And, I, know. Um, I don't know what happened. If Drago's, if you're watching, we miss you, buddy. <laughs> we miss you, buddy. Don't know where you're at. But, but then, you know, like, we just, you come know, back. yeah, come back. Come That's back. what I think's funny is, uh, I said I was going to get you in the clown, the so I got you in the clown. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, definitely. I think I think it's funny when people in the chat are like, you know, RWO, RWO. I'm like, I'm a fucking OG. You know, right? <laughs> I'm an original gangster, motherfucker. Don't talk to me about no RWO. I'll drop the fucking elbow on you, jabroni ass. I mean, <laughs> Dracos was only in one episode, the first episode, but he's still part of it. <laughs> oh, yeah. I haven't. I actually, you know, I was talking to Dracos back then about. Maybe trading a pod male ready breeder for a bunch of rats. Right. But I, I never really heard nothing about it. And I was waiting on him to get his, um, you know, frozen thought or his frozen game up. Because, you know, I don't I feed guess he was. Like, I don't know if you've seen it, but a couple months back, he was marketing like <laughs> and, and putting it out there that he was getting, you know, his frozen game up. Yeah. And like I said, I was going to trade him that pod male that I have, but. It's just too, like, I don't want to feel like I'm getting ripped off, and I don't want him to feel like he's getting ripped off. So I just, right. you know, I just figure I'd rather just buy them from him if I have to, right. you know, because I don't, like I said, I don't feel comfortable. Like, I don't know what is a good number, you know, and he didn't know what was a good number. So I was like, you know, just let's just not do it. <laughs> you know what? If you are talking to a person and that's the situation, you know you're dealing with an honest person. You know what oh, I mean? Yeah. Because someone who's trying to take advantage of you, you know, they would throw out a number that would be lower than yours just to try to get a better deal. You know, oh, yeah. and, and yeah, it's kind of like, stalemated like that. It shows that, you know, at least he's a decent person. Oh, yeah. No, Drago's is an awesome dude. Yeah, he's I'll, a good I'll, dude. I'll, but he's a good I just guy. don't know what happened. Yeah, I don't either. He's a he's a he's a Louisiana country boy from down south, so I don't know. I like him. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really They're necessarily not, like, I don't necessarily like, and he knows this and everybody that knows me or ever watched any of my shit knows. I don't like the live feeding shit. I think that's kind of bullshit on, on film. But other than that, he's a cool ass guy and I don't judge a man for that. So I'm right. you know, I have a friend. I talked to him. So I don't know though. I haven't heard from him. Maybe I need to text him tomorrow and say, what's up? Yeah. Right. Maybe I need to do that too. It's been a while. Mm-hmm. So um, I kind of wanted to pick your brain a little bit today about vending because I know you've vended some shows and, and you're fairly new at it. You haven't been doing it all that long.
We, so we actually like, got a show Saturday we're vending. So if y'all are in Millbrook, Alabama, come we, on down. Snakes. So you're learning as you go. And, and it's just like, what was some of the more difficult things about getting yourself set up, you know, doing this, like getting into the circuit, getting set up into the circuit. What, what has some, been some of the, the harder things about it? You know, I don't, I don't necessarily think any of it's hard because I'm an outgoing, outspoken right. fun person. So I think if I had to pick the hardest thing, it would be trying to get everything together and organized the day before or the night before, you know, because you got to be there at seven. So we made, we have a big coffin that's like four foot tall. It's a chalkboard right. that we made and we write everything on it. You know, all the deals, all the bull crap giveaways. And then, I mean, I, I really, I think the hardest part is trying to order everything like you're, you know, we don't have big display cases. So we use right. like, uh, I'll show you right here what we use. So like for a baby, I got these, they're these, these little, I guess you call them like tarantula tubs that I use. Well, that's, that's better than a deli cup at least. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, to use a deli cup, you got to have a big one. Roll Tide, Kurt. <laughs> Hell yeah! But yeah, Roll they. Um, I ordered it. deli. I ordered some deli cups, right? And this, I guess, this would be the hardest part because I ordered deli cups offline for the show to put my babies in, right. and I ordered the deli cups that I thought like would work. They would be big enough, and I got these, which is like. For ice, I use them for isopods because I cannot, I can't even put a brand new snake in here. See, it says powder orange 10 plus, but right. I can't not, even put a new hat. For baby geckos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you're not putting a ball python on it. I mean, you can. Uh, They're like, fuck, yeah, no. you know, it, it's not, it's not cool. And so when you, look at, when you look it up the next time, Nick, look up six inch. Oh, yeah, yeah. Six yeah. Inch well, now. Well, now I don't have to. I don't do that. I found those. A guy was selling them like two tables down, and he sold them to me for like cheap, you know, because I was vending and I got the vendor price, I guess. But I, luckily, he was there and he had them and they were perfect size. So I just went over there and bought like 12 of them or something, you know, and because I'm not spending thousands of dollars on a dip like the big display boxes that shit is expensive yeah. and you know i'm not selling fucking ferrari snakes i'm selling a goddamn you know a ford escape you know what i'm saying so <laughs> right. i don't need the production and the and the staging that most people like to have i mean of course i would like to have it but i don't care you know I, the people are buying a snake you know you can say that you're selling the pageantry or the you do want your, your station to look good. You want your boost to look nice and flashy or whatever. But at the end of the day, people don't really care what it's in. They just want a good right. deal on a beautiful animal, not on a healthy animal. And so people will walk by my table. And at first they might think, damn, this guy's no, white no, trash. Don't let him go out in the wild. And he, uh, they'll walk by it no. and they'll see that. And they'll see everybody else's nice, fancy boxes, you know. Well, they'll come back to my table. You want to know why? Because for them to pay for that expensive-ass display box and all the gas and all the everything it took to do that show, they have to charge more for a like a banana than I can, you know, right. because I live right there. I don't have anything in this. Like the most expensive thing that I bought is this, my, my banner. And I think that was like 30 bucks. Yeah. And wow. Because, well, yeah, I got it off Vista print actually Vista print was, they did me good. They had like a deal going on and it was like free shipping and all that. So I had to jump on it, but it turned out pretty good. And, but you definitely got to, I've noticed that shows, you know, since I've been vending it, you talking is the main thing. You can have a shit table. I mean, you could probably, right. you could have like three snakes on it. Normals. But if you are outgoing and outspoken and, and will talk to people, then you're golden. You're going to do good. You know, I do better than most people at, at the shows around here because, A, my snakes aren't really expensive, you know, and people can afford them. And, B, 
I don't, I talk, I got the gift of gab. So if people are walking by my table, I'm like, yo, 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 come here, come here. You know, I'm just pestering the shit out of them. Look at this. (laughs) Yeah. 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 (laughs) I'm like, have you ever held a snake? Here you go. I mean, I, I I think it's cool because we'll have kids that are there, you know, and their parents hate snakes and these kids have never had the opportunity to hold one. And they're like looking at it, you know, interested. And I'm like, do you want to hold it? And they're like, yeah. And so they'll be holding it. And then the parents will tell me, man, you're such a nice guy. The guy down there wanted $20 to hold this snake he had. And I'm like, they're charging you to hold their snakes? Does this take a picture with it? And they're like, yeah. And I was like, well, I mean, <laughs> you can hold anything. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not yeah, going right. to you to hold any of my animals. All I'm going to ask you to do is put some hand sanitizer on them. That's it. <laughs> right. So they end, up, they end up buying it, you know, and I think we do better at raffles because the last show we did, I think we may have, we sold all, almost all of our babies, but we sold it to a wholesaler right. that buys a shit ton at one time and then turns around and sells it. Not necessarily a breeder, owns like a pet store or something. But the majority of all of our money, which is almost a grand, I think, came from just a raffle and we raffled off like i think it was a specter just a single gene specter maybe yellow belly maybe not and then a little uh like a tub like well, uh, you would know if it was yellow belly because the specter yellow belly has like changes the look like because it's the same complex well you got you know this little box little shoe box with uh some substrate in it a heat pad and a water dish right with the snake and we did a raffle and at first nobody wanted to do it, you know? Right. So I took some of them damn tickets and stuck them in the fucking jar. Man, <laughs> and it just, looked like it faded the jar. You, dude, this woman came by, she dropped a 20 on tickets. The next, she's like, you know, cause the tickets were like so much a piece, but if the more you spent, the more tickets you got. Right. So, and, and anything on our table you buy, you get so many tickets. So like if you buy a snake, for a hundred dollars, that's instantly 10 tickets. Right. You know what I mean? And stuff like that. And people are more inclined to gamble, so to speak. You know what I mean? Like people yeah. come in there. I don't even want to snake. I'm a gambler. Yeah. I'm a gambling man. So I, I'm going to try it because at first there was only so many in there. The woman that bought the 20 she came back. She's like, I'm going to win it. I'm going to win it. You know? So she walks around and she comes back in the fucking, we have a Medusa head. It's like a, a planter with snakes everywhere. And it was filled up with red tickets. And she's like, well, fuck, you know? And I was like, well, you might win, but she ended up not winning. But it's just, you got to do those little things, you know, to try to kid as much as you can. I hate to say that because I'm not like a money hungry kind of person, but you do, you, you want to make it worth your while. And if you right. go to a show and you just try to sell snakes and that's it, and that's all you have on your table, you might not sell as many as somebody that's doing a raffle or buy a T-shirt. You get 50% off of any snake we make from right. now until I you know, stop, do, can't do it no more. So, I mean, we have these deals, and I think that's, that's how we succeed at shows. But having those giveaways and raffles and, you know, I mean, kids walk by my table and their parents won't let them have anything. They're just there to look, but they really want something. So I'll reach up, grab a, a, th- a, you know, a bin of isopods and just give it to them. I'm like, here, just take it, take it home and play with these bugs. You know, just because I want, like at the end of the day, I don't give a shit about the money. Like I, I spend $280 every two What's months. That, on- Anna? And I promise you that I'm not getting that back. You know what right. I mean? I'm, I'm, I'm doing this because I love these animals. Like, I don't know. If I have $300 in my bank account and I need rats, 200 of that money is going to rats all day. Right. You know, and that $100, I'm going to have to make it stretch. Yeah. But at the end of the day, as long as my animals are taken care of and I can sell someone a, a product that is healthy, happy, and that's going to thrive. That's all I care about. I just want people to not be scared of snakes and love reptiles. So that's why we do what we do. Right. So you, you, you kind of answered all the a couple of the questions I had for you because okay. one of the questions I was going to ask is, 
no, that's all good, dude. You got to get the gab. You're like, you know, we'll let you sit there and tell your whole story in any way you want to tell your story. You can tell it. But um, I, I was going to say, right? I was going to say, what what are some of the, the things you have seen that work that brought people in? And you mentioned about the raffles and stuff. And um, just from the little bit of time that I spent behind a table with a couple people that I have, and they're not doing nothing. There's not many people going, you know, up to their table. I mean, there's a couple people coming to talk, but, you know, while I was standing there, maybe only one snake sold, you know, but I mean, and plus they're spending three, four grand on their, you know, little like stands that the, the put them in display cases. And, and, you know, they went all out and, you know, it, it, it's, I think it's, not a foolish move, but I don't think you should get yourself in debt to to try to go and get everything nice at first to set up at these vendors because you're doing it with plastic tubs, you know, a little bit nicer than deli cups. And, you know, you're inviting the people in and, and you're talking and involving yourself into the show. And I absolutely agree. I think that's why you're being successful in it. Well, you know, the like uh, Rob says, the tub setups, that's a great like I've seen people make a shit ton of money on selling tub setups for crested geckos, for snakes, anything that can live in a tub. These people are, are setting them up that way. People can just go in there and buy them and then they'll be like, well, I really want that lizard or that snake, but. I don't have you know, I don't really know what to put it in. And then the son of a bitch is like, well, I got this right here for you know, fifty dollars. Right. You can buy this, and I'll get you a deal. I'll give it to you for thirty. When it cost them probably, I mean, the the thing we gave away the most expensive thing was the heat pad, and the heat pad was like twenty five bucks. Right. You know, so I mean, at the end of the day, I don't know. I I'm not gonna go spend a bunch of money because first of all, I'm cheap, and second of all, <laughs> it's not worth it to me. I don't like. I said if I had you know, gorilla gene or right. some crazy expensive ass snake. Yeah. Yeah. If my snakes were a thousand dollars or more, you better believe I'm going to have display cases, but my snakes, like I think the most expensive snake I've ever sold is $500, you know, just because like, again, doing dual sire and triple sire clutches, you don't really know what's in it. Right. And this was before shed testing, you know, so there was absolutely no fucking way to know unless you breed it. So I would sell a snake if it looked normal for 80 bucks. Right. You know, 80 bucks might sound high to somebody because it looks like a fucking normal. But at the same time, you don't know what's in it. I mean, it hell, for all, three know, for all I know, it could have fucking Mandarin in it and you just got an right. $80 Mandarin. I don't know. You know, right. but I, I like to do that. I, I'm not going to try to tell nobody what it's got in it if I don't know. That's for damn sure, because I'm not going to look like an idiot. So but yeah, tub setups are good, and you know stuff like that. People eat that shit up. I mean, anything you can do to make a yeah. buck, like for instance, the, the little containers that I showed. I think I paid like three bucks a piece. So if somebody buys a snake that's in one of my containers, one of these plastic containers, I have bags that are free. You can. You know, get a bag. You don't have to pay for it. But if you want the container that it's come in just to have it, you know, as a feeding box or, you know, just to keep it, whatever, it's five bucks. So if you right. buy $80 snake, you give me $85, I'll give you this this box and the snake. Easy. All right. So, so there's all these little things that you can do to make, make some money. So you, you just got to look at it and try to figure out, can I make money on this? And I'm going to tell you, I did that with isopods. I thought that right. when I go to sell the geckos, that's pretty much what I'm going to do next. See these right here? Hell yeah. Yeah. And, and I've seen those that look almost similar, almost identical to that. And they sell like crazy yeah, so, so fast. Good. You know, it's at the door. Mm hmm. She's in there. She's over here hiding. That's yeah. If you put though. 10 of those, if you put 10 of those on your table, depending on what show and how much you're charging, you'll sell every one of them. Especially to people that come to the show I'm wanting an animal. Female. She's hot and she's she's fat. They all de devoured a, a massive amount of crickets today. They went crazy. <laughs> right on. Yeah, that is definitely a good idea. 
But yeah, anything you can do to worth, make money. What it's worth, I figure. Here, Sean. I figure people, you know, buying geckos instead of just buying it in a deli container, right? And then have to go to the guy next to you and go, oh, let me buy um, substrate. Uh, then I gotta go buy wood. Then I gotta go buy some leaf structure. Um, now I gotta find an enclosure. Well, hey, I could sell you the the whole setup with oh, the shebang. ready to roll out the mm-hmm. door. You ain't got to worry about nothing. We go home, and I'll even say the food, and all you got to do is supply some spring water, and you're good to go. That's right. You know, and that just—I I, mean—that that goes for. I guess that goes for any of us. You know, that's selling any of it. If you're selling somewhat of a Stan, little, turn your mic up a little bit more. I'm guessing they can't. I guess they can't hear you. Hold on. Let me. How about now? Hold on. How about now? That's a little too loud, but how about now? Yeah, you're good. Okay. Hey, hey Pete, what's up, dude? There's too many settings on this dang thing. Anyhow, uh, oh, you you took over? No, no, you, you was just a... talking. So good, you could have a back. Where... My back. I don't know. You skipped off. I, I lost track where it was at. The chat. I don't know. I don't know where it's at. Oh, I see it. Anyhow, um, you know, if you're selling like an animal with some sort of setup already, I I just personally think it's going to move a little quicker. Maybe not, you know, your high end ball pythons, obviously, or, you know, something of that nature, but a pet quality animal or a pet animal that you're selling to someone who's just getting into it, it makes it a little more easier for them to want to get into it, I shall say. Um, because they don't have to go and search for everything, you know what I mean? Yeah, that's that's an awesome idea. I seen fungus I mean, like Queen next to it Eric with B the, just wrote in. What's up, guys? You know, like like you know Nick doing it with the smaller you know uh, hatchlings in those smaller tubs. Yeah, I mean, again, you know, everybody's set and ready to roll. They just go home with it and you know get some frozen thawed or pick up some live feeders at the show if somebody has them, you know. Right. Well, that's the good thing about my snakes is I don't sell a snake if it eats only live. So if you buy a snake for me, you can bet your ass it's eating frozen thaw. That's that's right. my that's my goal. I don't want to sell nobody a snake that will only eat live because most people I sell to are pet owners. And you know, let's be honest, a lot of people don't like to do that. So to me, if I can make it easier for someone to go the easier you can make it on somebody, the more chance you are to sell it. And I'm not going to say feeding live is terrible, but I'm going to say that the majority of people that I sell to, they don't want to feed live. They, it'd be easier for them to go to the pet supermarket or something and buy a box of frozen rats, you know, and be All done right. with it. I think that's one thing that I really want to want to do is the hatchlings that I make get them on frozen thawed because the ones i got now i mean it's it would be a lot of time consuming work to get them all on frozen thawed but uh my hat well, you know, I, okay. I think i'm gonna start that cinnamon that i got from fna right it was eating like freshly killed uh rats right and i had it for a week and i got it eating frozen thawed Right. Well, so, I mean, they was presenting it, you know, freshly killed or whatever. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. But that's uh, what I'm saying. Even, even if it, like, I've had snakes that will only eat live, and that's why people get rid of them. Right. And I, I try every week, and if it eats it, it eats it. If it don't, it will eat it eventually. So I just, I have to be persistent because I don't want to feed live, and it's really hard for me to get live here. Like, it's not right. something that is readily available. Like. If I want to feed live, I'd have to wait every two weeks on a Saturday for someone to drive from Georgia that travels up Alabama and selling rats. That's all they do huh. because there's nobody around here that really, I mean, I used to know a breeder when I first got into it that would sell me rats, but it got to be to where they couldn't supply me and theirs. So I can't, I couldn't buy them from them no more. And right. I had to figure something else out. So I get that. For sure. What's up, Chrissa? Seen you just strolled in. Thanks for coming in. 
So where do you see triple six serpents in 10 years? That's a hard question. I don't know. I guess we'll just have to see. I don't really, <laughs> I don't really, uh, like I don't have big dreams and aspirations of being, uh, what's up, Kent? The next Kevin. The background, next buddy. Somebody. Like, I don't really, I'll probably literally just be working and then you're doing like, what you're doing. Yeah, yeah, same thing, probably. I'm so never going to get on the rest of the in the building. You so you don't want to like do a whole like designated building for it and like you know have 500 snakes and then have to breed your own rats because you know you got so many snakes you have to so you never see yourself doing all that. No, because and I'll tell you why I don't, me personally, because I feel if you have that many, it's a fucking chore and it's not fun anymore. Right. When something loses its funness to me, then I don't want to do it. And I don't want to lose my intrigue and excitement for the animals. But I, did, I don't know. I just I honestly feel like when you have that many, it's not going to be fun. I mean, how could it be fun? I have like 60 snakes and every day I'm in here cleaning stuff. So right. I could only imagine having that many, like 500, you said, and having to that would be a full-time job and I don't want this to be my job. I'm happy with doing it with the kids, doing it as a hobby, you know, doing a show here and there, but we just, we just like to do it to have fun. That's all it is and see what we can do. You know, it's right. just something to do. Exactly. I mean, I haven't been doing this long, but I tell you what, the excitement that egg cuttings, bring is just like unexplainable like if you David. haven't cut a bunch of eggs what's up dave how's it going it's buddy fun. if you haven't experienced that in life i suggest you should because it, it, it's just it, it makes you feel like a kid again like it makes you sit there feel like you're you're 10 years old and you're, and you're about to unwrap like that christmas present that you wanted you know what i mean that it brings that type of feeling and I, I don't ever want to take that out of my life. So I'm going to be doing this shit forever. <laughs> I and that's what I'm saying. If you, it's so fun to do it. But imagine if you had that many snakes, it would get to be to where you cut so many eggs and it's just, it's just like whatever. I mean, you're still going to be excited. You're still right. going to, you know, still have the same feeling. But after about 40 eggs, 50 eggs in a day, you're going to be like, damn, man, I want this shit to be over. I want to go home. You know yeah. what I mean? Shit like that. So I, I don't think that that would be fun to me. But cutting eggs is one of the most funnest times that I've ever had, you know, especially with kids. Kids love it, you know. And it, to me, it's fun to do it with the kids so that they learn about life and death, about anatomy. You know, all these things that you wouldn't necessarily know until you got older. You know what I mean? My, my kid's four years old and she knows all about life and death. You know, we right. she's seen me hatch snakes and they die. She's seen them be wrapped up. I mean, it's the, the dark side of snake breeding. It's not all roses. You know, I mean, shit happens. So if kids can see that, it'll make them realize at an early age, like, <clears throat> you know, don't take anything for granted because anything can happen. You know? Yeah. I seen Pressure P in the, the comments that he didn't come up. They must be running way late tonight. Nah, I told you. I think I think he's I think he's I think he's been busy. I think my man's been on the grind. He's grinding it away. It's all yes, good. Sir. We yeah. still we, we just miss him. We still love him, Justin and Alexandra. We ain't gonna Much ride love. it too bad. <laughs> So, Nick, um, if you could have a superpower, what would it be? That's like the question we ask everybody. I think super strength. Super strength. So, yeah. like, if if you get a flat tire, you could just, like, kind of lift the car up and do the work. Walk that kind of strength. Yeah. One yeah. arm, like, you know. 
Superman. He said, yeah. walk it back home. <laughs> he said, I'm Put not it on your shoulder and walk that bitch back home. <laughs> I mean, he said, I'm not changing on the side of the road. You're your own tow truck. Home. I mean, that, that could definitely have some advantages for sure. Heck yeah. So, um, getting to some other questions. Um, this is a hard one, and I stumped a couple people with this one. But if you have the uh, whole reptiles community's attention and you have one thing to say to them, what would you say? If I had the whole reptile community's attention and they were listening to me. Yeah. And they were listening they were looking all eyes on you and, and you're sitting there and you have to tell them one thing. What would that one, one thing be? One thing, just one. Well, you could tell them more than that, but what would be your main point? <laughs> praise hell and praise Dale. <laughs> Who's Dale? Born <laughs> hard, bitch. Number three, baby. All right. Well, see, I, I wasn't a fan. I mean, here, let me show you crazy. something. Call me crazy. I wasn't a fan. Uh, okay. I mean, praise hell, praise Dale. All right. <laughs> I was not expecting uh, that. I would probably honestly say, why can't we all just get along? For real, you know, like, like for real, let's put all I mean, the like, me, aside. like me. I hate live feeding online, like, I hate it. Like, anybody that does it can kiss my ass, but I'm not gonna be an asshole to you, you know what I mean? I'm not gonna right. like create drama for no reason, you know what I'm saying? So, I think that everybody just needs to you can think how you want, you can voice your opinion if you want, but don't try to judge somebody because of what they're doing, you know, talk to them, try to just talk to them, you know, and you'll get more out of it trying to talk to somebody and being respectful than you will making a fucking video, a slam video on YouTube trying to hurt somebody, you know, like yeah. I like Drago, for instance, me and Drago, I, I think we're cool. You know, I like Drago. He's my buddy and he does all life feeding online. Like that's how he made his panel. Let's just be real. And he knows right. that, and I know that, and you know that. But I don't judge that man. Like, I, at the end of the day, he's still a human. He's just right. doing, I mean, snakes eat live rats. Yeah, sure. I don't necessarily agree with the filming, but he's still my friend. And I'm not going to bash him online because he does it. You know what I'm saying? I'm just not going to do it. Right. To each their own. You know what I mean? So I just think it needs more respect in the community. All right, um, I'm going to ask you this question, and then I hope you and Stan could take over the conversation for a minute because I'm going to mute you myself. You ain't going nowhere. And mute my camera, and I got to go in on the YouTube side to give away these memberships. I'm going to give away five memberships, and you'll see in the chat. But, um, uh oh. Yeah, so good luck what to all is, you. I, I'm giving away five memberships tonight, so good luck, everybody. But what has been the like the biggest challenge so far with with the ball pythons? And there you go. Well, there's a lot of challenges, <laughs> but I think the biggest challenge, the, biggest, that I have the absolute been, biggest challenge, the biggest challenge that I face me personally is keeping up with everything, trying to make sure that not just my snakes are taken care of, but my lizards, my tortoise, my dog, every other animal that I have, I'm trying to make sure that they're took care of and the humidity's right, you know, the they got fresh water, the temperature's right, you know, I have to check, I check my temperatures like daily. I'm like OCD about it. So I think the most challenging thing is just trying to keep up, you know. Time management, baby. Yeah. It is, and, and I have everything, you know, broke down. Like, I'll do the females one day, then I'll do the babies one day, then I'll do the males one day, and then I'll start over. <laughs> but it, it does become, you know, kind of challenging, especially, like, if you work full-time at a job, and then you come home, and you might not want to do it, but you know you have to do it, so you do it any damn way. I think that's the most challenging thing is just keeping up. I, 
I like to say that I keep up great, but you know, anybody who has more than a handful of snakes, it's hard, you know, and, and I ain't gonna lie about it. I've had stuff happen that I am completely ashamed of, but it happens, you know, I mean, you can't be perfect. Not everything's going to work out perfect. That's why I say if, if you're going to people that invest a lot of money into this shit, to me, that's ignorant because you're never going to make that fucking money back. You can, dude, and I don't want to, I'm not a pessimist. I'm a realist. So when it comes to me, I'd tell it like it is. And I'm telling you, if you go invest your fucking house, like you get a second mortgage on a house kind of shit and you're investing that amount of money into this, do not get mad when you don't make that shit back. And don't get mad when it, you know, you'd start losing snakes or, you know, things are going to happen and there's nothing that you can do about it other than try to grow from it and learn from it. And if you stop learning doing this, then you might as well sell all your animals because you're in a rut. You don't ever need to stop learning. And that's what makes me so mad about this community is <clears throat> people will get into it and they think they know everything. Right. They think, Oh, I'll never have to assist feed or, Man, I'll never have this happen or I'll never have to call a snake. Well, no, you do it long enough and you're going to have to do these things. It's just what's going to happen. No, you're ignorant. You don't know what you're talking about. And I'm like, you just need to listen. If you if people would just listen more, you know, shit wouldn't happen to them. Bad shit wouldn't happen to them. You have to learn from people's mistakes. And Every even day if someone's is a new day to people, learn, bro. Every that's day. right. Even if you think somebody's giving you bad advice take it and tweak it learn from it you know don't learn from it don't just shut it down take it I mean, and ask had, somebody else you know yeah take like that my advice mom. and if you're not sure you ask the next person you know, you know like i use moss in my in my incubation box it's like right after they come out of the egg before they shed i put moss in it i pack that motherfucker with moss so it's super humid in there and they got something to go through to get that first shed off and people they always talk about it and I'm like, I can't be the only person in the world using moss in their incubation boxes. And it worked for me. And I tell people, I'm like, they're like, man, that's crazy. I'm like, look, you might think it's crazy. I thought it was, I just tried it one day, you know, just to try it. Nobody told me. I just tried it. Had some extra moss. And I tell people, I'm like, just try it. And they're like, no, no, I'm not going to try it. And I'm like, why not? You know what I'm saying? Like, it's not going to hurt anything. You might change the way you do things. I don't know. I don't give a shit if you do it or not. But right. people just don't need to keep shutting people's ideas down just because they think they know everything. That's what I'm getting at. You know, like you don't know everything. If people are telling, giving you advice, just take it. You know what I'm saying? Right. Absolutely. Take it. If you don't want it, then don't 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 care about it. Don't but don't ask. be disrespectful. You know what I mean? If you're not going to take the advice of others, don't ask. That's how I look at it. I mean, I ask people questions all the time because like I, I I'm still learning. There's no way that I know all this like in, in two years that I've been doing it. There ain't no way I know it all. And I, I tell people all the time what I say on my shows is in my opinion. It, it's there's nothing factual about it. It's my experience that I've learned from this so far. And mm -hmm. if you have a better way, then please tell me. Oh yeah. Like, that's how people need to be. You know, you got to be open to criticism. You can't, you can't get into something like this and think that nobody's going to criticize everything you do because everybody is going to criticize everything you do because that's just the way it is. And just like yeah, Rob said, you should never you stop know, learning. And also, you know, what works for you might not work for me. What works for and that's me true. might We're all in different areas. You know? So like we got different, know, different like, atmospheres, like, you know, I don't do the Facebook thing. And I hear a lot of people talk about how, you know, when they post something on Facebook, no matter how nice their enclosure looks, someone will still pick someone's there out. picking apart. Oh, yeah. so yeah. like, yeah. and, and I mean, you get that on lives too, or, you know, if you do a short, somebody's going, Oh, well, I didn't, you know, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, okay, well, I don't know. I don't, I guess I don't pay attention to the negative comments and I just push on through that and just, like everybody, I'm not going to, I guess I'm not going to give you that clout to, to comment back on your negative question on my short or live. You know what I mean? 
See, right. I'm the opposite. I comment back with fucking facts. Shut them up. You know. What yeah, I mean? well, I could comment well, back you with ain't facts gonna come too. On but my what, what facts are you gonna come? <laughs> My fact is my animals are healthy. My animals exactly. eat. I clean my animals. I mean, what, what, I don't really have to shoot the facts at you. I know in my, I know what I do. I do it just you're, to be an you're only, you, you know, they're only looking through a, a lens in a, in a, in a fucking picture. You know what I mean? So oh, yeah, no doubt. You, you can't I mean, I really get criticized. Like, it's like judging the book on the cover, not what's on the inside. You know what I mean? Like, Oh, definitely, yeah. Nobody wants to look at the whole picture. They just want to jump to conclusions. You know what I mean? Like, it's just, I don't know. Too many people, too much negativity, and too many people beating each other down when they need to be picking each other up, especially yeah, in this and, community. And, I mean, like, I mean, well, I, it's like I, always say, I don't really you say somebody, anything about something. people doing live feedings. People do their own thing. It's just... Eventually, it could come back and, and bite every single one of us in the rear. I mean, and that's just yeah. has nothing to do with what you're doing and how you do it. It's just people have negative thoughts, and then you get the wrong people involved in our industry. And well, I'm not going to say who, but we can all figure out who I'm talking about when I'm saying the people we don't want in this industry. Yeah. You know, well, they've already is, taken some rights away from from a bunch of other people, so we don't want that to <laughs> forget oh, yeah. about it. My, my thing over is, here, is you know? I, I know a guy in California. It's I'm bad not enough. We got to deal with with the laws <clears throat> that they're trying to, to pass him. now. So it's crazy. Well, I was talking to this guy in California that I was looking at his YouTube. I'm not going to mention his name, but he had some stuff on there that was very weird, and I didn't like it. And it was kind of like you're not treating these snakes good, and I didn't get on there and bash him. I got on there and said, hey, man, you know, this works good for me. You might want to try it. Educate. And, you know, yeah. he fucking was a man and he took it for what it was and he did it. And guess what? It helped him. And he is forever fucking grateful because if I would have got on there and said, fuck you, dude, you're a piece of shit. Your snakes got stuck shed. You're not doing it right. He would have not listened to a thing I said. But right. since I got on there and I said, hey, man. You know, it looks like your snake's having some trouble shedding. I don't know, you know, if you know this, but if you do this, it'll it'll work. And I'll be damned. He did it and it worked. And he fucking messaged me and was like, thanks, man. You know, but it's all about how you talk to people. You can't fucking point your finger and cuss at people, man, because you catch more flies with honey and you do, you know, anything or anything. Sugar, you know, Listen, you're not Ju Justin, Justin turned me on to the electrolyte soak for bearded dragons mm -hmm. that. I used to always use just warm water, you know what I mean? And he's yeah. like, nah, bro, he's like, check this out. And the first time he showed me that stuff, I, man, that stuff is like magic, bro. Yeah. You got stuck shut on your snakes, you get the electrolyte soak for bearded dragons, a couple little, little scoopers in the warm water, let them mm -hmm. sit in there for 20 minutes, peels right off like butter. I don't care where the shed is at. Nice. Right I, I, I got a couple that have like just a couple spots like if not near their face one's on the top of its head just from the winter because i have oil heat and they get dried out in the winter a little bit and, and it's not that bad you know what i mean it's just a couple little spots like none over their eyes or their pits or anything like that so i'm going to go get that electrolyte so and when the summer comes you know like when just the order right off of right. amazon yep yeah, i'm gonna amazon try it out in order i'm gonna try it out see what it's like Dude, I'm telling you, once you try it, you'll never use just plain old warm water again. Hey, Mariah, if you really you. want a snake, I hit a couple normals that I'll be giving away. I'll give you one. If you really want a snake, hit me up. But you can't set it free in the wild. I've seen something you said earlier. Like, where would you set it free? If you ended up not wanting it, get in touch with me and I'll take it back. But if you really would like to have a, a, a hatchling, I, I have a normal that we'll, I'll send you if you pay for shipping. Just get a hold of me if you're serious, and I'll, I'll tell you what you need. Nick, go ahead, Nick. I didn't mean to interrupt. Oh, no, you good. I was just wondering how long y'all usually do the Let Me Know show. Was it an hour it, or something? Yeah, we're in an hour. So we got like oh, five Oh, you want us to let left. you know? So you want us to let you know how long yeah, it is? Yeah, we got yeah, about just, five just, minutes. Just let me know. Just let me know. About five minutes. 
No, I'm glad you uh, had me on. I've been wondering how long it was going to take for you to have me on. I've been sitting here like a fat kid that ain't got no friends. <laughs> I was about ready to say, give yourself a shameless plug, but if you're going to look at it like that, I mean, I might not. <laughs> I uh, I have a show called Sipping with Serpents on Saturday. I wouldn't advise anybody to watch it. It sucks. And uh, I have uh, social media outlets like uh, TikTok and stuff, but you don't have to follow it. I could really care less. All right. Well, that's cool. I was just offering Ron. I don't mean to be weird, I don't mean to be weird or anything, but I was just offering. No, but for real, on my, on my Sipping with Serpents, Ken is, there you are. Ken's always there with me. He don't ever leave me hanging. So if y'all like beer, alcohol, barbecue sauce, or animals, Tune in every Saturday at 8 uh, Central Standard Time and have a beer with us. Pretty fun. And, uh, I drink, and I if you fall beer. in the mud, and if you fall in the mud after drinking the beer, if you hit up Ken, Ken will also sell you some homemade soap. Yeah, we got really some good. homemade soap here. And stuff. <laughs> I mean, I don't do it, but my yeah. brother, like my honest to God brother, he, he's in the soap game and he's in the barbecue sauce game. I mean, he, he's making a, um, a soda gift pack he, he's doing barbecue sauces out of orange pop uh root beer uh cherry coke and what's the other one dr pepper dr. And pepper yeah. yeah dr pepper and so uh yeah um you interested look up fat jack sauce on, on facebook and uh check it out he just i mean he's got some weird ones like apple pie barbecue uh mm -hmm. like some kind of peach barbecue and it's all good i mean i had jars of it in, in my Dr. refrigerator and it's all, all right man no he says Dr. Pepper, he said you take that summer like, sausage you cut up the summer sausage in a frying pan a little bit of butter do a dr pepper right in there it turns right in the syrup boy oh you smashed mm. that summer sausage nice Talking um, about smash and smash that like button. <laughs> Go ahead. Heard uh, everybody. We'll appreciate it. We we will appreciate smashing that like button. That's for sure. But uh, his mind. early reviews on his uh, Dr Pepper sauce from his friends up there, Fat Jack's sauce. But mm -hmm. uh, they said it tastes like the Sheets one without all the bullshit because I'm sure the Sheets uh, Dr Pepper sauce has all kinds of bull crap in it. And he uses like as much natural ingredients as he could get. Sheets. I mean, he's using pop. Well, Sheets is a a, a Wawa or whatever, like a Seven Eleven. It's like a gas station that has food. Hmm. Oh, it's a gas station. Or it's yeah, it's like a gas. No, it's a gas station. Sheets. Uh, oh, it's like okay, a Wawa. Okay. It's like a Wawa or whatever you have near Say you. Say Wawa again. He was almost sounding Indian for a few minutes there, man. I was like, what's going on? Thanks, Banna. That's cool. They're building a Wawa down the street from me. It's pretty interesting. I mean, stuff. I mean, he's he's been a cook all of his life and he's older than me and, and he's got sauces down that's for sure don't sleep on it because it's good shit head on over there and get saucy today get, get saucy, saucy. The, the pop one ain't gonna be out like right now he's just working on it he has the the orange so, and the so Dr. i'm assuming Pepper he done. has some some hot barbecue oh. sauces oh uh, he has some hot stuff yeah okay okay yeah okay. yeah he has a I'm hot, assuming has if you mild. got a barbecue, you got some hot stuff. Okay. Hot, mild. Like, you know, mm -hmm. if, if you talk to him and you say you like it really hot, he'll make it really hot. You get the old pop. You get the old. Whoosh. Yep. You'll get it. <laughs> you'll get her. So we got a couple minutes left. Anything else you want to want to say to, to the people out there, Nick? Just love your fellow reptile enthusiast, man. And I guess back to what we was talking about, just try to be positive, man. Don't, uh, don't be, don't be people. Don't yeah, be don't, just don't be a dick. Be respectful. If you see somebody doing something you don't like, just talk to them. Chances right. are they're a pretty cool person. If, if you're into reptiles, you're probably not an ass. Probably pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. So cool. yeah, you should just try to talk to people. I mean, I mean it may, might be a little weird, but probably not an asshole. <laughs> yeah, oh, you're definitely going to be a weirdo. I mean, I mean but you're yeah, not. We, we, we stand out a little bit, you know? 
Oh, I stand I up. Always remember, <laughs> treat people kind. That's always right. Remember. Always be kind, people. <laughs> always be kind to people. And we got Sundog Serpents over there. Stands yeah, big that. shout out. Big shout out to Josh and Sarah. And then he's got and a big shout Sunday out to the brother hey right Zeus. here. Hey, Zeus, the Our brother. RWO member. You know. Heck yeah. You know, Stan, if you guys, if you, what, 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 what was you going to say? I'm going to go ahead, Stan, th throw your line out there. Oh, no, I was just going to say, what are we on? We on Tuesday night. Mm -hmm. So, That's listen, uh, everybody, tomorrow's Wednesday. So, don't forget about balls and things um, with Keys Constrictors tomorrow. Um, and then we'll be on Vance's channel Thursday night for the RWO show. So, I'm sure don't Vance forget about Morph Forge after Keys because they come on oh. after Keys, Morph Forge. Oh, do they? What time they come on? I'm sorry. Um, so yeah, Morph Forge comes on tomorrow night as well. They're they right have, after uh, Keys. They have TJ and Greg on tomorrow night, I from believe. Ripping. Yeah, yes, from from Ripping Reptile. Reptile. Yeah. So then we got us on Thursday night. Oh, Vance over there. And then we got Keys again on Friday night. What else we got? Oh, we got uh the Wiz, the Wizza. Wiz on Saturday. Wiz, Wiz on Saturday. On the old sophisticated ignorance. So you guys yeah. know the deal, man. Everybody support each other out there. And if you ain't, come on, man. Please do. And, and, and if uh, you ain't if you ain't doing you ain't uh, support cut up boys. US art. And the cut up boys. Oh, the so cut, the cut up, up boys are Monday night. I if forgot. They they used to be on Tuesday and then they changed it up. It's Monday at Six o'clock Eastern time, five o'clock Central time. And I don't know the rest of them. So I get those two, but the other two, <laughs> y'all going to have to figure that out. <laughs> but I do appreciate Kurt and Ryan as well, as always. Yes, we do. We appreciate, and we, we, we appreciate everybody that's up in the chat as well. And Love like always, man, make sure you're supporting US Arc, US Arc, Florida, because if you ain't, what are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? If somebody needs some help with it, with some, uh, you know, getting a membership to US Arc, I'm sure if you reach out to anybody in this chat or anybody in the group chats and you need a helping hand we'll help you out. to become a member, reach out, reach out. More the merrier, man. Strength in numbers. We need Strength it. Strength in numbers. I see you out there, Ryan. You know, as always, bro. And over there and up in the corner. That's my that's my homie Steve oh, from Steve. Reptile I Am. Oh, so far with that guy. The guy's a ball of energy and a ball of fun. And, and he likes to get the kids involved in everything that he does. Like that guy's got got some energy, good positive vibes. And uh go watch yeah, and his if you guys don't videos. go over and subscribe to my channel, now um Ryan might be knocking at your door. I'm just saying. I'm just saying, yeah, if you guys I mean, don't subscribe, I'm just saying. We'll put a hit out on your ass. We'll, we'll, you know, we'll do that. Ryan's backing <laughs> it up over there. All right, guys. Until next week, next Tuesday on the Let Me Know show. I don't know who I got on. I, I, I'll I'll put it out there. It's in my Come calendar. On, you're supposed to already somebody, know. Somebody well, you should have the calendar look. sitting next let to me you. Look. Hold on. It's right Jeez. here. Come it's on. right here. The program. Give me a minute. Get with the let uh, me know program. You gotta let them know, man. What are you right. doing? Oh, no. You gotta let them know. We, we, we have we have irresistibles on next week. Oh, Nikki and Kurt. Okay. Yeah, we have Nikki and Kurt from Irresistibles. And uh uh yeah, this Thursday, don't forget, we're on we're on Vance's channel. We're on the Dead Man's channel this week. So get on over there Thursday. We'll see y'all there. Is it is it Nikki and Kurt on Saturday as well? Or am um, I wrong? I think they're man, on Saturday. So many, I'm gonna have to start writing there's everybody's so many, stuff yeah. there, man. They're on I'll Saturday, right I now. think, after Kent. Yeah, I want to like, give Kent's everybody the shout out, but like I, like I, I don't want to get it wrong. Something like that. Well, you, you uh, I'm afraid I'll get week, it wrong. We'll, get say, wrong. we'll have them say what time they are next week. If they are Saturday, we just not showing the time. <laughs> <laughs> but until next time, if I don't see you here, I'll see you. You hear? We out. And live stream. Why do I got to hit it twice? <laughs>